everybody. I'm struggling to do a video on sanctification today. And it's something the Lord's been showing me in my heart. Um, I have a couple other videos where I might do some cut, cut and pastes in here. Um, to uh, Instead of repeating all these things above uh, some of these verses on sanctification. Which you can get anywhere online. Just look up sanctification, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians. You can find all kinds of things on the sanctification process. And of course, any any person, any deacon in most churches be able to tell you whether salvation, uh, regeneration, and sanctification. But actually, sanctification, as everybody knows, is being set apart for God's purpose, being made, be, being set apart, being made more and more like Christ. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Um, you know, and I say, and I say that kind of tongue in cheek, isn't that wonderful? Because in churches, oh, we're being more made more like Christ. So, you know, when we see him in that day, uh, we'll be like him and we'll recognize him. And it sounds glorious and it sounds very religious and uplifting. Praise God. We're being made more and more like Christ. Yeah. Yeah, you are. You are if you're truly his, if he's truly chosen you before the foundation of the earth if you're elect then God's chosen to do a work in you uh, again we're speaking about his church he will make his church you know people always use the uh, passage forsake not the assembly you know well forsake not the assembly is just like a uh, an engineer assembles parts together of a ship a naval engineer or something all those parts are fitly joined together to make a ship uh, but that's God doing that. That's God fitly joining these parts together. The same with sanctification. God is doing a work in his people. And churchers, what I call churchers, they, they take these Bible verses and they want to be like Jesus. In other words, they want to mimic Jesus. They want to, um, which I guess for a Christian informed nation isn't so bad, but really, if, if you're the Lord Jesus Christ, if you really have received salvation and you're trying to walk with him uh, and he's regenerating you from a sinful flesh and sanctifying you, being sanctified is a very, very painful thing. It really is. Take it from me because it's stripping, kind of like, Kind of like basic training, the old the old basic trainings anyway. They would strip you down to nothing and then rebuild you under their identity. Well, that's what the Lord has to do with us. He has to crush us, strip us down, make us realize we can do nothing. We are nothing without him. And then build us up in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just going to church, shine your shoes and put on your wool pants and, uh, you know, brush your teeth and, and present a nice Christian appearance carrying your Bible under your arm. I'm afraid that's what most people think it is. That's what most people teach that it is, if you understand the context and where and, and what I'm using this, this video today. But that's just like in Galatians, where, where the Apostle Paul, let me look it up here on my computer. Um... <clears throat> Okay, okay. That's like where the Apostle Paul goes and says in Galatians 4.10, 10, you observe days and months and seasons and years, exclamation point. 11, I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. Paul is talking about the church. He's talking about like days Good Friday. Did you go to church? And uh, on Easter... Oh, my Lord. Think about that. What would happen if you didn't go to church on Easter Sunday? Think about that. Would you Would you really feel bad? Would you come under a lot of pressure from your congregation, people that call themselves his congregation, the ecclesia, you know, the called out ones, the congregation? Probably should have been, should have been uh, said that it was congregation instead of using the word church. But are you going to suffer? Because you didn't show up on uh, Easter Sunday to your church, I'd say most most of you, you probably will. You probably will suffer for most people that claim His name. Or Christmas, are you going to suffer because you uh, 
because you didn't show up to the church building on uh, on Christmas or Easter. Yeah, I bet you'll come under all kinds of uh, social scrutiny, wouldn't you? I know I do. I know I do. But the work of sanctification uh, is uh, is is much deeper than that. It's uh, it's having your your wife come against you, laugh at you, make fun of you. You know, Satan come at you through your wife, uh, the accuser of the brethren, using your parents, your brother, your sister, your mother. You know, what's what's Roland doing? Why doesn't he go to church? Why doesn't he this? Why doesn't he that? You know, because if you really decide to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, there's no mediator between man and God but the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're His. And you have to learn to listen to him first and all that you do. You bring the Bible alongside of you to, to uh, because the Bible is only written, dear friends, for God's people. So when they're talking about being sanctified and made like Christ, you know, uh, that's a hard thing. That's having your, your flesh stripped off of you, being stripped down to nothing to be, to be made dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a hard thing. That's a hard thing, and you will not be popular. I've just I've seen it in my job, I've seen it on the job uh, when I worked as a in as a marine mechanic, marine engineer. Uh, we had uh, salt water come in a floating derrick. I gave the boss a, a report of how much water was down there, the kind of damage, uh, and he looked right through me. And he went to an elder mechanic and he says, "John, what's going on down there?" Well, little did he know that I was the one that told John what I saw. And John just said verbatim exactly the same thing that I just said to that supervisor. And he goes, oh, thank you, John. And do you know why that is? I know why it is now. I could never understand it for years. It's because of spirit. It's because I was of the Lord and the man wouldn't hear what I had to say. It's amazing. It's a spiritual thing. It's not an academic thing. It's not a four-brained Western mind uh, um type of thing where we can uh we can have uh you know discussions and debates on the bible and all that's that's what uh, that's what most people think church is they think it's just different doctrines and all but the thing is you can't even understand a doctrine in the bible if you're not the lord's if you don't have the holy spirit working in you if you're truly not his you're not even going to understand what it's talking about you may have some concept of it but you you haven't experienced it that's what sanctification is. That's what real sanctification is. And that's why, again, in Galatians 4.10, you observe days and months and seasons and year. I, I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. That's the Apostle Paul saying that. Because they didn't go to Easter service. Or uh, they, didn't, they missed Christmas service. Or they were late for church. That's disrespectful to the Lord. You know, that's what Paul's talking about here. You observe days and months and seasons and years. That's what he's saying, and that's what the Bible says about church. Now, the Bible's talking to God's people. Are you really following Jesus Christ? Are you being, are you a called out people? Are you being stripped down? Are you being changed from yourself? Do you put another God before him? Uh, you know, the, that's why Jesus said, unless you hate your mother, father, sister, brother, you cannot be my disciple. Strong disc preference for. That's why Jesus is saying that, because he's talking about the things that test our hearts. And I can tell you, dear brethren, that in my life, whether it was uh, working down the waterfront, uh, whether it was on active duty with the Army, um, uh, you know, I've always seen this sanctification. I'll give you another example of sanctification. When I ran uh, five tons, uh, trucks for special operations centers. All those soldiers would try to outrun me and leave me back in the woods. They knew my uh, sense of direction wasn't so good. They had all get in their five tons and put the pedal to the metal, go as fast as they could to try to, to try to lose me. And I could never understand why I was treated like that, why I was treated so differently. Well, that's because God, in his grace, decided to do a work in me. And I've seen it every day in my life whether in the school system, on the job, or in church. I've seen it. The same spirit, that same rejection, 
that you truly experience if you're the Lord Jesus Christ. It happened to the prophets, it happened to Jesus himself, it happened to his disciples. It's amazing, you know, the Apostle Paul would roll over in his grave and say, St. Paul's Church, St. Peter's Church. Man, <laughs> they hated these people. They were imprisoned. They were stoned. They were mocked. They were scoffed at. Okay? And that's what you'll still happen today to you if, if you really follow Christ in your heart. And the biggest adversaries are the ones that Satan uses are the ones closest to you. And yes, even the church will come at you. The modern day Pharisees. And this is what I'm learning sanctification is really all about. It's not lip service. It's not just knowing your Bible. Well, it's, it's helpful to know your Bible. Just like I said, Galatians 4.10. Yeah, that's really speaking to the present day church, isn't it? But you can only understand that Bible and the things in the Bible if you have the Holy Spirit of God working within you. Really understand the meaning of it because you indeed experience it. If you don't experience it and it just sounds, you know, holy and flowery, you know, pink and sentimental Jesus stuff, man, you don't know what it is to be a Christian because this is serious business. And, you know, if, if scarcely only elect would be saved, I'm trying to remember that scripture, um, uh, well, sorry, I have, uh, I have some uh, mental deficiencies here. I can look it up, and I don't have time to. Um, but, you know, if, if scarcely the elect only be, would get in, then that means most people won't. A remnant they talk about. Uh, I'm just trying to say how hard, really, sanctification is because everybody in the world will reject you and hate you for his name's sake. That's what it means. It's a real, real deal. It hurts. It hurts. It touches your heart. It crushes everything in your life. So you have to run back to the Lord and say, God, help me. Jesus was a man of many sorrows. That's what I'm finding sanctification is all about. It's not just pink and fluffy Jesus talk, going to church and looking good and being moral. There's nothing wrong with God's law. We have written on our hearts. That's why God's blessed Western nations like he has. But no. Rather, true sanctification is is God doing a work in you, and it hurts. I think it's very interesting because I looked at I was reading on Abraham Lincoln, and Abraham Lincoln never joined the church, and I can understand why Lincoln never joined the church because he didn't fit in. But I can tell you, you know, by from what from what I feel reading about Abraham Lincoln, he was a true man of God. He had the Holy Spirit working in his life, but he never really fit in, and he always felt. He always felt lesser than everybody else, too. That's another mark of a Christian, I think, you know. Well, anyway, just wanted to uh, share with you today uh, how hard it is if God's really doing a sanctifying work in you because it will separate you from everybody else. Not just lip service. It's real. Well, dear brethren, praise God because uh, we know what the rest of the world has coming. Yeah, they're going to be burnt. They're going to be burnt for the hardships uh, that we suffer for Christ's sake. It's not just, uh, oh, put on the full armor of God. I know a guy that likes to uh, to write, have avatars on the computer. Of the, he's got the armor of God. He's got the Christian shield and a Bible verse. Man, man, it makes me sick. It makes me sick, sick to my stomach. It's like a veteran pretending that they're a veteran that have just only read about it, never been there. That's what being a true Christian is like. Unless you've experienced it, been there, done that, and having the Lord do a work in you, you're nothing but a you're nothing but a phony. You're nothing but a phony. You're not real. And I'll tell you, a real Christian, somebody who really knows and being regenerated by the Lord, will always be able to identify their brothers and sisters because they experience it. Just like a veteran experiences another veteran, knows what he's talking about. That's what, that's what the Bible is. The Bible is a, a manual, a soldier's manual. Uh, but unless you've been there and done that and seen it, and you can't really relate to what it's saying, unless you experience it. Well, anyway, this is a little long video, but I just wanted to uh, 
shed a little light on what I see the sanctification process uh, being of, and it's very, very painful, and it's not very pretty, because you start seeing how really sinful and deceived the rest of the world is. God bless. Good night.